key factor was that allowing QIP to save the rate there is $1.9 billion over the 60-year life of those units. Let's put QIP in perspective here. Let's, people, I think, don't understand what it really is. And it's to prevent the ratepayers from paying compound interest on the interest. So if I build a house, I go out and get a construction loan to build that house. The, normally, a person pays only the interest on that construction loan. And then when I go to build, when, I, when the house is done, I get a final loan, and that, that loan is a 30-year loan. Construction work in progress says, don't put the interest for the construction loan in the 60-year or 30-year note because it costs that much more. Pay as you go. So in the case of the Georgia plants, it's $1.9 billion to put that interest in. And the Georgia legislature said, no, this is, this is not what we want for our state. It's not what we want for our ratepayers, and they repealed it. Florida, South Carolina, Mississippi all repealed it. They felt like it puts them at a significant competitive disadvantage when they're trying to attract new residents. Imagine Missouri trying to attract new businesses, Google server farms, using the 1953 Chevy versus state-of-the-art energy-efficient power plants. Also, construction work in progress, uh, the pay-as-you-go minimizes the rate shock. If I don't pay anything until the plant's done, all that money builds up and you get a large, huge delta change uh, in your rates versus a, a slow increase uh, as the plant uh, goes online. Let's talk a little bit about why our industry has changed. We keep, I think we get compared to what we were back in, you know, we talk about large uh, construction overruns uh, in the past. We're a different business today. It's been 35 years since uh, a lot of these plants were online. Today's plants are standardized uh, versus what you have in the previous generation of plants. You had 104 basically custom design plants. Standard designs, modern construction techniques will assure that those costs are kept in check. Uh, they are working on the, uh, the power plants in Georgia. They have what they call a limited work authorization that allows them to do work. They actually have two of them now. Yeah, but the, the license has not been authorized by the NRC. allows them to do uh, certain situated work uh, on the plant. They've expended about $1.6 billion on that plant, and their intent is to build those plants and put them online. They'll be the first new plants constructed in the states, and it'll be interesting to watch to see. So far, they're on schedule and on budget, as, uh, as the, uh, the two units at BC Summer. The plants we talked about in Florida, the Levy plants, uh, those plants have been pushed off due to uh, a loss in low growth from the recession. I think that's it. How much time do I have left? A uh, minute. A minute. Uh, little discussion about you know how our industry differs from years ago. You know, out of the, the, the Three Mile Island incident, which just changed our industry totally, uh, the U.S. power industry created what they call IMPO. It's the Institute of Nuclear Power Operations. It's, it's an industry or it's an industry organization unlike any else in the, in the really the world where all the power plants have uh, basically throw resources together and use those resources to bring the entire industry level of excellence up. We don't pursue minimum regulations, we pursue excellence, which is way above the, the basic regulations. Uh, and since IMPO has been in, in place, we've seen dramatic performance increases uh, in productivity, as well as our uh, reduction in, uh, in safety, or actually safety events. So it's been a, uh, quite a change for our industry. I spent two years down there. All, industry, all power plants send people to Impo. So I went to Atlanta, Georgia, where the headquarters are, and spent two years at Impo, traveling around the, the U.S., uh, evaluating other nuclear power plants for excellence. 